What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme up against the all new AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX 370. Basically, the question I had here was if ASUS had used this chip in the ROG Ally X over the Z1 Extreme, what kind of performance gains would we see? And the reason I chose the HX 370 was because we've got that new RDNA 3.5i GPU with 16 compute units compared to the Z1 Extreme's iGPU based on RDNA 3 with only 12 compute units. So far, I've been seeing some really interesting results, especially at lower TDPs with this new Ryzen AI chip. It's actually a really great performer at those lower wattages. And if you're familiar with the ROG Ally X, you know that in performance mode with the new setup here, it'll run at 17 watts. In turbo mode, it goes up to 25. And I also wanted to test at a 30 watt TDP between these two chips. Now, when it comes down to the main differences here, basically, this is what we've got. So over on the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme, we've got eight cores, 16 threads, up to 5.1 gigahertz, and this chip is based on Zen 4. We've also got those Radeon RDNA 3 graphics, so it's basically the same thing as the 780Mi GPU, with 12 compute units up to 2700 megahertz. And in the new X, we've actually got much faster RAM, which helps out with that iGPU. It's running at 7500 megahertz instead of the old ROG Ally 64. Over on the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX 370, we've got a 12 core CPU with 24 threads, and this is based on Zen 5. AMD finally kind of added their efficiency cores, so we've actually got four Zen 5 cores and eight Zen 5C cores. Those are more of the efficient cores. This will also boost up to 5.1 gigahertz, but instead of having an RDNA 3i GPU, they've upgraded to the new Radeon 890M. It's based on RDNA 3.5, and we've got more CUs here, more compute units, 16 instead of 12, and this iGPU will now boost up to 2900 megahertz. Starting out here with CPU performance, I'm gonna be testing at 25 watts, so basically performance mode just for the CPU. We're gonna move over to some different TDPs with gaming. But using Geekbench 6, the HX370 got a single core of 2842, multi 12,529. And if we just take a look at this, single core about 15% greater than the Z1 Extreme, multi, 18% greater. So we got a nice little jump here, but you know, when it comes down to it, that Z1 Extreme can really hold its own when it comes to gaming on the CPU side of things. But I did want to test one more here. We've got Cinebench R24 at a 25 watt TDP. Remember, this is basically performance mode. Total multi core score here for the uh, Z1 Extreme, 709. On the HX370, 965. Marks with 3D Mark Time Spy. At a 17 watt TDP, the HX370 is coming ahead by 25%. So we got a total score here of 3,343. And then when we move up to a 25 watt TDP, that gap really closes. And I did run this a few times because I thought something might be off here. But as you can see, I mean, we're not that far off coming in with almost 7% difference. Obviously, that HX370 is coming ahead. And the same thing at a 30 watt TDP, only a 7% difference. Remember, both of these units are using LP DDR5X RAM. We tested at 17, 25, and a 30 watt TDP. I also went ahead and ran the Geekbench 6 OpenCL GPU benchmark. On that new HX370 with the Radeon 890M, we scored a 34,825. On the ROG Ally X with basically the Radeon 780M, 28,840, giving us a 20% lead on the HX. Now it's time to check out some real world gaming. And I did choose a few different games, different genres, just to kind of get a broad view of what's going on here. Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, medium settings, no FSR, running at a 17 watt, 25 and a 35 watt TDP. Same settings across the board. At a 17 watt TDP on the Z1 Extreme, we got an average of 34 on the HX370, average of 42. 25 watts, the Z1 Extreme jumped up to an average of 39, and the 370 jumped up to 48. And finally, at a 30 watt TDP, 43 on that Z1, and 52 on the 370. So across the board here with Cyberpunk 2077, looks like the HX 370 with that new RDNA 3.5 iGP is 17 to 20% faster in Cyberpunk 2077, depending on what kind of wattage you're running the chip at. Using the built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, high settings, 1080p, FSR is set to balanced, 20 to 25% faster on the new HX370. 
So this is a pretty big jump here, and just right there at 25 watts, you can see that the 370 did have an average of 61, giving us a really playable experience, as opposed to the Z1 Extreme's average of 51 FPS. I know Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an older game, but it's still one I always like to benchmark. I've been trying to get any of these chips to run at a constant 60 at medium setting, so medium 1080p, we're 16 to 19% faster than the Z1 Extreme on the new HX370 but none of these chips were able to get a constant 60 or over with these wattages we used here, so 17, 25, and 30 watts. GTA 5 high settings, 1080p, 17 watt, coming in with a 65 average on that HX370, and across the board, 11 to 13% faster than the Z1 Extreme. Now when it comes to Forza Horizon 5, medium settings, 1080p, no FSR, not that big of a jump, and I kind of didn't suspect it would be, given that this game is very well optimized. 370 is only 6-8% to 8 faster than the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. So far, on average, it looks like that HX370 at the same wattages, same settings here as the Z1 Extreme, comes ahead by about 13-20% to 20 in gaming performance. But when it comes to these handheld gaming devices, personally, I don't ever go into a game and just use a preset. I usually take some settings down because I understand that we've got a low-end GPU here, whether we're working with RDNA 3 or 3.5. For instance, with Cyberpunk 2077, when I'm playing on the ROG Ally X, I take it down to 900p, performance mode, low settings, and you can see the difference here. By the end of this benchmark, we'll definitely get an idea. And I know everybody does game differently. I know it would be really nice to grab one of these handhelds, go into a game, turn all of the settings up all the way, and game over 60 FPS, but unfortunately that's just not the way it is right now with these integrated graphics, so you really gotta kinda pick and choose how you wanna run these games. And personally, on these 7 inch displays that are used in a lot of these handhelds, I think 900p still looks really good for these AAA games. And at the end of this benchmark, on the Z1 Extreme, we had an average of 67 FPS, over on the HX370, an average of 77, giving us around a 15% difference between the two at the same wattages. So at the time of making this video, it looks like we could see up to a 20% increase in gaming performance using an HX370 in a handheld like this, but in the end, I mean, would it really be worth it? If another handheld hits the market with an HX370 and matches the price of the ROG Ally X or even goes lower to the Steam Deck, which I really don't think is going to happen, then yeah, it would definitely be worth it. But right now, I think that ASUS has a pretty decent thing going with that Ryzen Z1 Extreme. The driver optimizations that they've done to their drivers for the Ally and the Ally X are pretty awesome when you compare this to the performance of something with a 780M and just kind of that stock AMD driver. Because after all, they've actually had a lot of time to work on it. Remember, the original ROG Ally has this same exact chip. We've basically just got faster RAM here. And it has gotten much better since launch on the Z1 Extreme. And I suspect down the road, we'll see a nice bump in performance on the HX370 also, as soon as more people get their hands on it. But for now, I would have loved to see a bigger jump in performance with this new 890Mi GPU. And I know a lot of people were kind of expecting more of a performance bump. I'd say, you know, up to 30-40% increase in gaming performance. And at higher wattages, this HX370 can definitely perform. But we're not going to be doing that in a handheld device. We're going to keep that wattage low, get some good battery life. And I really wanted to match what the Z1 Extreme is doing right now in the Ally X. We've got that 80 watt hour battery. And even at a 20 watt TDP, this thing gets great battery life. I suspect that AMD does have something in the works right now. Maybe something like the uh, Z2 Extreme. Not exactly sure what they're going to be calling in. Personally, I have a feeling that they will be using Zen 5 and those Zen 5C cores to keep that power down. But I'm not sure if they're going to go with RDNA 3.5. Like this 890M, maybe just rebranded without the XDNA or uh, Ryzen AI built in like they did with the Z1 Extreme. But we'll just have to wait and see what they have in the works. So yeah, this was just kind of a first test, kind of comparing it against that Z1 Extreme, up to 20% performance increase with this new Ryzen AI and that 890M iGPU. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. I mean, would it be worth some company out there building a machine with the new Ryzen AI HX370, knowing that we're only going to get, you know, that kind of performance jump? Not super massive. It definitely helps out. But is that something you would purchase? Would you kind of skip it? Stick with what you got? Let me know down below. Like always, thanks for watching.